Okay, I wanna make a second demonstration of the power ruler feature in EasyCAD. So what this allows you to do is to set up the parameters for making a ruler and laser marking it. So it's under the laser menu in EasyCAD and it's called power ruler. And this thing, here's the one I set up in my previous demonstration. I'm just going to delete this or I guess open a new one. This will stay in the demonstration for the moment, but what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna draw it out so everybody can see what we're trying to do beforehand. So this is what a ruler is gonna look like. We're basically going for something like this. We're gonna put large hash lines that are probably gonna be about, I don't know, 10 millimeters tall. And we're gonna have a couple of those and we'll finish up down here somewhere. So that'll just be a little ellipsis. Zero, 10, 20, and then we're gonna finish on 100. And then we'll maybe even put little half, let's say five millimeter hash marks. So, and we can put values on those or not. And these will be five, 15, and et cetera to 95. And then after that, we have to add one more set of hash marks, but this is gonna be the most tedious because we have to add little individual ones. So there have to be four in between there. And we're gonna set these up individually. So we're gonna do one here, and then it's gonna be repeated to the sixth position, to the 11 position, to the 16 position. And then we'll add uh, the same thing for the second tick mark. And you'll see how this works out, but I just wanted to kind of show you what we're going for here. So let's jump into this and take a look at what it takes to mark this. So first I'm gonna click on the add button and I guess we can run through this very briefly. So you have your basic new open save, save as, export to the workspace buttons up top. These are just zoom and minimize and auto resize buttons. So what you're gonna do is treat this as an object list and you're gonna click add and that'll add a piece of, well, some kind of information. It's either gonna add a line, it's gonna add a value, or it's gonna add a piece of text or some vector artwork. So you can add any of that to your ruler. And you can also export your ruler when you're done making it to your workspace and then add whatever else you want to it, like a normal piece of, uh, you know, normal EasyCAD file. And it also has functions within it to actually mark from this screen as opposed to exporting it to the workspace and then marking it from that screen. I don't use this. I didn't think it worked very well. I've struggled with it, so I exported it to the workspace. But it does have a parts counter that you can use. So let's jump into this. So we're going to click the add button and then we have a type that we can add here. So are we going to add a line? Are we going to add a number value? Are we going to add the text like the little millimeter we're going to mark? Or are we going to add a picture or something else that we're going to import? So for us, we're going to use the line, we're going to use the value, and we're going to use one piece of text. So for the text, we have the option of changing any text height, spacing, the font type, the uh, centering, and Let's see, over here we have hatching, which is pretty well known by now, I would think. I have a video on beginner's guide to hatching, and you can check that out if you need to brush up on hatching. So that's just going to be making, giving our lines and our values and our text some thickness. So what we want to do was, as soon as we select our line is we're going to select a pen. We're going to use the default pen in this case, so we'll just make sure our pen zero is set up so we can mark on our material. And then we have a bunch of fields down here. So first we have the graduation number. That's the total number of hash marks. We're gonna add a set of parameters for each length of hash mark. So let's start with our long ones. So we have these long ones that are uh, denoting the zero all the way through 100. So we have 10 plus the original first one, which is a total of 11 marks. So we want 11 to be in that box. And then the start position, that's gonna be, where do we start? We're gonna start at the zero position, so that's simple enough. What number are we gonna increment by? Well, we're gonna increment by 10. So just put 10 there. And this is all in millimeters. So our line width, now we're gonna give the line a little bit of width so we have something to hatch. So let's just make it something real small, 0 0.05 millimeters. You can make it bigger, you can make it less, but your hatch distance is going to have to be pretty darn small if it's less than 0 0.05. So we've gotten through that. These two values are dark. Now these will be available once we switch to the value button. So let's just ignore these for the moment. Um, this is not available either, but and we can focus on this once we do the value as well. But these are essentially just leading zeros and trailing zeros. It's just a poor translation. So what we need to do now is tell EasyCAD how long we want these lines to be. So these lines are going to show up vertically, just as you see here in the little previous demonstration window I had. So we want to set a Y value only. So that's going to start at the X0 position right here and at the Y0 position. So we're gonna extend that, let's say a total of 10 millimeters. So it'll be a pretty tall line. And we're not going to extend the X anywhere. It's just gonna be a straight vertical line. And we're going to hatch that line. We'll use that pattern and we'll make the hatch distance, hatch spacing 0.01 millimeters. So let's say okay to that. 
and we'll auto resize and you can see we should have 10 lines here. So now let's add numbers on top of these lines. So we're going to add the 0 and the 10, 20, all the way through 100. So let's click add again. Now let's choose value. And how many of these numbers do we want? Well, we should want 11 numbers. What's our start position? Well, we're going to start at the zero position, just like we started before. What's our increment position? Well, we're going to increment every 10 millimeters, because that's when we want the values to show up, right on top of these hash lines. What's our start value? We're going to start at zero. What's our increment value? We're going to increment by tens. Now, that's where these two numbers come into play. You have to remember that maybe you'll have a different value here. So you may be starting at a different position and you may be incrementing by a different position. In our case, it's gonna be exactly the same. It's a pretty simple one. We could add a hash mark and a value on the fives just to show the difference. We'll do that later. So I don't want any leading or trailing zeros. So we're just gonna say, don't show any trailing zeros. We don't want any leading zeros either. If you did, you could put however many you wanted right here and then click that box to enable it. We are still going to hatch this, so let's just click that. Let's choose some pattern. We'll use bidirectional, get rid of all calc, make that 0.01. And let's see, we have the option to position our values, our text. The, sorry, well, let's not call this text. Let's just call it a value because we do have a text option down here. So we're going to leave this at x0. And then we're going to change the Y. So we made this total of 10 millimeters and our text height right now is four millimeters. Let's just change it to two, keep it small, maybe three. So we have an automatic value for the width of 1.5. So let's make this a total of, I don't know, 13. That should be right on the line. Let's say, okay. And you can see now we have a little value showing up on top of every single line that we just made. So pretty simple, right? So now let's add those fives marks. Let's click the add button again. We're going to add a line. We want a total of 10 marks for the five positions. Our start position, now it's not zero anymore. We're going to start at five. Now we're going to increment by tens. Our width, we're going to make that 0 0.05 again. You can make it thicker, thinner, whatever you like. We're going to enable the hatch, get rid of all calc, use that pattern, and go 0 0.01 line spacing. Now we can make this a little bit shorter. Previously, we used 10 for our largest hash mark, so anything shorter should be fine. Let's just make it six and we're not going to do any leading or trailing zeros so let's say okay so we have our fives positions now so that was pretty easy right now we need to add some ones positions in between now this is where it gets a little bit more tedious because we're going to add one and then we're going to increment by five so we're going to add the one line we're going to add the six line we're going to add the 11 line and we're going to do that all at once and then we have to go back and add the two line the seven line it's going to be a little bit tedious so we have to do this four times so let's do it and see how it works Let's click add, we're gonna add a line. Now, in this case, we're gonna want 20 of each because that's gonna be how many we need to get one here and one here all the way through. So our start position is gonna be one, increment position is going to be five, line width is gonna be the exact same, 0.05. We'll enable the hatch, get rid of all calc, use that pattern, change that to 0 0.01 line distance for the hatching. And this is going to be, let's, let's go with five. That'll be simple enough. I think we used six for the last one. So, well, let's go with three. Keep it short. And let's see, I think we got everything correct here. So let's say, okay. Now we have one little line following our lines that we made, our fives and our uh, major hash lines. Okay, so we need to add our second line. So let's click add. Let's click line, choose 20 positions. We're going to start at the second millimeter point. We're going to increment by fives, just like the last small line we did. Line width is going to be 0 0.05 millimeters. We're going to keep the height the same at three millimeters. We'll enable the hatch, choose the same pattern and keep the hatch real small. So it fits in our 0 0.05 line width. We'll say, okay. And that should go right through to the end. That looks pretty good. So same thing again, we have to add the third line. So 20 again, start position is three increment by fives line width is still going to be 0 0.05 keep the height to three enable the hatch choose the same pattern and change it to 0 0.01 let's say okay and there we go and let's add our last one which is going to be four so 20 instances again start position is four millimeters increment by fives line width 0 0.05 
keep the height to three millimeters, enable the hatch, 0.01, and we should be okay. So that should be our full ruler. We shouldn't have any overlaps. And there it is. Okay, so let's add one more value and we're gonna add a five position value. So we're gonna have five, 15, 25, all the way through 95. So we want it to appear right above this six millimeter tall hash mark. So let's click the add button. Let's choose value. And we want a total of 10 numbers to show up. Our start position is gonna be five millimeters. Our increment position is going to be 10 millimeters. That'll be our spacing. Our start value is going to be five. That's the number we want to show up first. Our increment value is also going to be 10. Start point, that's going to be x0 because we're telling it to start right on that number five at the five millimeter position. And our y start point is going to be at the top of this line. So this is a six millimeter line. Let's just make it 7.5. And we need to change the text height because this is going to be a letter just like we chose. And I think we chose three millimeters previously for the large hash mark. So let's just choose two. So this should be pretty small and that should be okay. Let's enable the hatching. We can choose bi-directional and we'll just leave the hatching the same. Let's say okay. And now we have a smaller number showing up to identify those five hash marks. So that's pretty good. Now let's add our text that says millimeters. We'll throw it in right after this zero. So let's click add once more. Let's choose the text radio button. We can choose a text height, let's say of three millimeters. And this is just going to be a single mark. We're going to put it, let's say right between the zero and five, let's say at one millimeter. And we're not going to increment because we're not worried about that. We can actually just make that zero and we can use the start point over here at one millimeter for X. And we can choose the Y start point at our middle line is going to be six. Our tall line is going to be 10. So if we make it maybe eight or so, that might be okay. And then we actually add the text down in this blank box at the bottom, and we're going to make that say MM, and that's it. We do need to hatch that. So let's apply that, and then let's say okay. So it looks like we're a little bit low. Now we could be there. That's actually not that bad. Now we can make it smaller, take it off to the right, do whatever we want with it. All we would have to do is select it in the object list, click edit. And if we wanted to move it a little bit further to the right, we could change that to 1.5. We could change the uh, Y value to let's say nine. And maybe we'd even shrink it a little bit to two millimeters tall. So you can see what that kind of does. So it's legible at that point. Maybe we move it a little bit further. It's personal preference, but that's essentially what you do. So if we click export to workspace right now, it will prompt us to save. I already saved it, but if I click save as, I could name it something. I saved it as 100 millimeter ruler. So I'm gonna cancel that and I'll just export it to the workspace. So there it is, we can send it to the origin and you can see if we scroll in that it should already be hatched. There's our hatch pattern. Now we'll auto resize. And we can, the only thing we have to do now is make sure that pen zero we're gonna to use to mark everything is set to appropriate settings for whatever material you're going to use. And then that's it. You just save the file and mark it and you're ready to go. Now, when you do mark this, you do wanna make sure that you're actually marking to the correct size. So have some kind of ruler or a caliper or something available so you can check it. And if it's wrong, make sure your focus is okay. Also make sure that when you're in that power ruler menu, there is a parameter button down here at the bottom and it doesn't let you switch between straight ruler, ring ruler, or disc ruler. Make sure you're on straight ruler. Disc ruler is pretty self-explanatory after you get the hang of straight ruler. And ring ruler, I believe, is for a rotary. So that's not going to apply. But if you have this wrong, then your values won't show up correctly. And lastly, if you have uh, still an issue with your sizing, all you need to do is go to adjust your distortion. And I did make a video on that. Feel free to look it up. It'll tell you how to change your field basically so if your laser is showing up at a you're marking a box at 120 millimeters and you're measuring it and saying well that actually shows up to let's say 110 millimeters or something very far off well then you're going to put 110 in this box and it'll scale down appropriately so i go through that in the video check it out if you're interested so I hope that gets you started with Power Ruler, and I hope this was a pretty clear explanation. I did put up another video with uh, another smaller scale ruler that I needed to make for my own purposes, 
And I also did a brief demonstration of the, the uh, disk ruler and I did talk a little bit about the, the parameters of the power ruler as well. So you can check that out if you want a little bit more on it. I think I kind of said the same things twice, but that's all right. Hopefully this will help somebody. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below.